Hello everyone and welcome to the Sky Channel and also welcome to the fourth day of the class series. So we have covered Axe Warrior, the Crossbow class and the Healer class. And today we're going to be talking about the Swordsman class and what we're going to do is we'll also release a video tomorrow and day after tomorrow on the two classes that are left. And if you watch all six, I think you'll be very comfortable in understanding which is the best class for you. And of course, also knowing how you can counter each classes because you know them so well. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and check back in tomorrow and day after tomorrow. And if you haven't watched the previous ones, check them too. And hopefully they will all be very helpful for you. Now, as I mentioned before, this video is going to be about the Swordsman class and it will cover the active skills, the passive skills, the selectable skills, pals, relics, souls, mounts, fruit bonuses that you can get, equipment, your artifacts, back accessories and tech park bonuses. And in the end, I'll also teach you how you can save a lot of money on in-game purchases in The Legend of Mushroom. Okay, so I also think it's important to mention that I would really appreciate if you have any thoughts or if you've done some tests that are different than mine and you want to share it with the rest of the viewers, please use the comment section because information coming from just one source, which is myself, is not as valuable as information coming from a community because then the ideas are more well refined and we're able to learn from each other. Okay, let's start with the active class skill. So you deal 3821% area effect damage and then you increase the counter damage received by your enemies by 60% and that lasts for 5 seconds. This of course lets you know that one of your focus for this class is going to be counter damage and as you'll soon learn that is your main way of dealing damage to your enemies. Once you move over to the final evolution you actually increase the damage to 8597% area effect damage. The counter damage increase is still 60% but now it's for 8 seconds and also you restore 15% of your maximum held for five seconds that should let you know that you are probably a very tanky class with a bunch of healing with a bunch of survivability and the main damage is coming from counters of course once we start talking about passive skills all of these things are going to be highlighted even more i'm just giving you teasers to get you thinking all right, passive skills. The first one is that counter chance goes up by 30% and the counter multiplier, which actually increases the amount of damage that you do each counter, also increases by 30%. But wait a minute, what is counter? Counter is the damage you do to the enemy when they actually release a basic attack on you. So you get hit and you attack the enemy back and deal a certain amount of damage to them each time to do a basic attack on you. The higher the counter chance, the more chance you're going to release that attack on the enemy each time to do the basic attack. And the higher the counter multiplier, the stronger you're going to attack them back when they attack you. Next one, defense goes up by 30%, increasing your survivability. And as I mentioned before, you are going to be a little bit of a mountain, a really tanky class. So this is the start to it. Next up, damage resistance goes up by 10%. And essentially, my understanding of damage resistance is that the enemy attacks you, you resist a portion of that damage, so you actually take in much less damage. However, your counter doesn't get reduced because of it. That's the only way this could actually make sense. I mean, I couldn't imagine them reducing your counter attack because of damage resistance, because you have a lot of survivability anyway, and a bunch of healing. And the only way you're dealing a lot of damage is through counters. And if you're really decreasing the counter damage due to damage resistance, that would reduce the only way you deal damage, so you're kind of nerfing yourself which i don't think is the case so essentially the understanding is that damage resistance reduces the damage you take but your counters still remain just as powerful okay so defense and then damage resistance what's next gain a shield every 10 seconds that absorbs 5% of your maximum HP for 5 seconds. So every 10 seconds, you're getting a shield equal to 5% of your maximum HP in the last 5 seconds. Really cool, right? And guess what? In the final evolution, you get that shield and it absorbs 10% of your maximum HP and it lasts for 5 seconds. This, of course, is in addition to the fact that you are restoring 15% of your maximum HP every time you release your class active skill. Add that to the fact that you have a bunch of defense and damage resistance things are getting even better 
Finally, the last one increases your damage resistance by 2% for every 10% of your HP lost, which means that when you only have 10% of your health left, you have an additional 18% damage resistance. Add that to the fact that you already get 10 from there, you're looking at a 28% damage resistance, which is pretty cool. So you can already see what this class is about. You heal a lot, you get a lot of shields, you don't take much damage to begin with, right? You have damage resistance, you have defense, making you a really strong mountain that doesn't take much damage. Now it doesn't do a lot of damage either, and the way it does damage is through counters, which is great because with your damage resistance, you're reducing the amount of damage the enemy is doing to you, but you can still counter them just fine. So now we're going to try to build our swordsman in a way that we can maximize what it's already great at. And with that, let's go to our selectable skills. First off is the Nature's Renewal and Shroom Shield. Both of them enhance your survivability and your class is primarily about survivability. Nature's Renewal gives you 30% of your maximum health back over 5 seconds, while Shroom Shield gives you a shield equal to 20% of your maximum health and it lasts for 10 seconds. Using both of them together can be a little tricky because in the start of the battle you're going to get a shield, you already have full health, and you're going to start healing yourself, but since you have full health, the healing is kind of going to waste, so you could probably pick one of them and decide to go ahead with it. But given that your class also gives you shields and healing, I would probably say go with nature's renewal because your class already gives you shield and I'm not really sure how it works if you already have a shield and you get another shield. Does it actually stack? That's something I have no idea. So perhaps nature's renewal just to keep healing yourself makes a bunch of sense. And of course, healing the health that you get back lasts forever while the shield goes away over time. So when we talk about Disarm and Dazzled, you don't want to use these because Disarm and Dazzled actually make your enemy unable to do attacks on you and you are going to be relying a lot on doing counter attacks to the enemy, but you can't counter them if they aren't attacking you. Smoke Bomb is good because it actually increases all damage received by your targets within the range by 30%. So of course that is quite interesting for you to help you do a little bit more damage using your counters. Wild Gust is also okay. It deals a bunch of damage and then it increases your attack by 15% for 5 seconds, which of course should increase your counter damage as well. Blitz Assault is quite good because it is necessary for you to counter the class that's very strong against you and that's the mages. Now what it does is it deals a decent amount of damage and then it gives you 3 seconds of damage immunity. Meaning that all of the skills that the mages are going to release right when the battle starts, it's not going to hurt you because you have immunity to damage. So a must have if you're fighting mages, it actually helps you live much longer against them. That doesn't mean you're really going to win because, well, mages don't do a lot of normal attacks and you get most of your damage from counters. Blade Pierce, in my opinion, is quite important given that you aren't a very offense-driven class. It does a bunch of damage and then it actually makes the enemy lose 1.5% of their maximum health per second for 5 seconds. That's 7.5% of their total health. And given that you don't have a lot of other ways to do a lot of damage, Blade Pierce might be your best friend. Clone Strike, very important. 30% of your health, which is better than a shield. And then it lasts for 10 seconds and deals 200% damage with each basic attack so it's not just a shield it's also doing damage to your enemies and it also does counter so an absolute must have and it's a very powerful skill 100 slashes deals a bunch of damage to the enemy and then you get 20 percent basic attack damage resistance which is helpful for you you're all about resisting damage and living really long and you get 0.5 percent attack bonus based on your current health for five seconds it doesn't really specify how much attack you're going to get but i guess the lower your health is the higher the attack which is going to be helpful for you to do more counter damage dragonic resonance is another interesting one it deals some damage and then it it deals 2% of the target's health as damage, which can also be fairly useful. And then it deals an extra 1% damage to the target's maximum health for every 10% damage resist. Which means if you are facing another warrior, this can be fairly helpful because, well, warriors have a lot of damage resistance. Finally, Whirly Snare can be interesting to increase your crit rate and crit damage. And by my understanding, counters can crit as well, which could make this a pretty nice source of getting a lot of damage on the enemy. Now if I were to pick five of these, I would probably say the clone strike is a definite must. It increases your survivability by a lot and it deals damage to the enemy 
and can counter. So yeah, definitely try to get this. 100 slashes is great as well. Deals a reasonable amount of damage, gives you extra damage resistance and attack, which can make you a little stronger. Blitz Assault to help you against all those mages that might give you a lot of trouble. Blade Pierce to help you deal a lot more damage than you otherwise might have been able to, given that you are more of a tank. And probably Nature's Renewal to help increase your survivability even more. That being said, these are the five that I'm picking. You should definitely try stuff out and see what's working better for you. And then, of course, let us know in the comments below. All right, let's talk about pals. And of course, the first one to mention is the Electric Pup. It's a pink pal, so it does have a pretty nice damage multiplier and attack speed, but the deploy effect is where it shines. Increases your counter damage by 60%, and of course, counter is your main way of dealing damage, and then also restore 1% of your lost health on each counter. So of course, you can see this is perfect for this class. It's giving you healing, and it's giving you counter damage so both survivability as well as damage is being given by this one pal so an absolute must have for your class next the rainbow guardian and essentially it is giving you a 10 percent extra counter chance and 100 percent extra counter damage again as we mentioned before counter will be your main source of damage so you want to maximize on the chance of getting counters and of course on the damage that you do per counter making this another must have for your class hipster tortoise is also really good now it's another one of the pink pals and essentially when your health goes below 50 percent you get a shield equal to 30 percent of your maximum health which is quite a big shield and that can help you live much longer the only thing i don't know is how that stacks with your other shields that you are getting from your class quite often either way this is a pretty nice effect and can help you live much longer when things get quite challenging the Kung Fu Master is quite an interesting one as well. It increases your HP regeneration by 40%. Now that's not the same regeneration that you get from Nature's Renewal. This is using your regeneration stat, which you can get from gear. Now, if you do not have a very high regeneration stat, then perhaps using the Kung Fu Master is not meaningful because that extra 40% is only going to be helpful if you have a high enough regeneration to increase your recovery by a significant amount. Angel Deer is quite interesting because it increases your damage resistance by 15%. Now there aren't too many sources of damage resistance, so of course the Angel Deer comes in with a pretty nice effect, allowing you to live much longer. Finally, the Veldi Lizard is also quite interesting because it helps your pals do a bunch of damage, especially if you don't have a very high regeneration rate, then perhaps instead of Kung Fu Master, you could swap out the Veldi Lizard. And you will notice that it does have a nice synergy with a few souls and relics, making this a pretty nice choice as well to deal some extra damage to the enemy. And of course, we can start talking about relics now. So when we talk about the masks, I guess the counter mask seems to be the best choice for you now, of course if your counter chance is already very high you could go with the critical rate mask just to get a few extra damage in against your enemies when we talk about the blue relic the dragon weave circlet seems to be the best choice because it allows your turtle and lizard pals to have a 20 percent chance to deal damage equal to 0.5 percent of their own maximum hp which is great because you likely have both of those pals with you and that's a reasonably high amount of damage we're talking for the purple relic, I would probably pick the metamorphic crystal because that gives an additional attack speed to your dog and you definitely should try to get the dog because it is very important for your class. Now for the yellow relics, I'd probably go with the storm red tomb giving you some extra damage resistance for basic attacks, pals, counters, combos and skills allowing you to live much longer. If you prefer to take a more offensive route, you could get the flame book which increases your attack by 1% per second up to 10% over 10 seconds. You probably will live over 10 seconds, so you will be able to realize the effects of this flame book as well. In orange relics, I'd probably choose this one, which increases the duration of your 100 slashes. Another option would be the one that increases the duration of your smoke bomb if you are actually using that skill. Finally, the red relic, I would probably go with the storm necklace, increasing the damage of your clone by 30%. And remember, clones are able to do counter damage, making this quite helpful for you. 
All right, talking about souls, the HP bonus soul is, of course, very helpful for you because you are a pretty big tank and getting some extra health is definitely useful for you as well. Now, you could fuse it with the HP regen soul, which will give you an extra 15% HP regeneration bonus, which, of course, is great. And you can use it with the panda, allowing you to get a lot more HP regeneration, especially if you have a high percentage of regeneration coming from your gear. The counter damage soul is also very helpful because counter is going to be your main way of dealing damage to the enemy and that can be fused with the pal damage soul giving your pal some extra damage and it's a pretty decent amount of extra damage now if you're also using the veldy lizard you can see how this works pretty well together allowing you to make your pals a very nice way of dealing a reasonably high amount of damage to the enemy which is great given that you are such a defensive class you should happily take as much offensive attributes as you're able to and pal damage is a good option for you to choose as well the attack soul is also helpful to increase your damage and it can fuse with the healing rate soul which helps you get a little bit more healing and finally the critical resistance soul is pretty nice as well and that fuses the palcrit rate and palcrit damage soul making your pals even stronger right so we're talking veldy lizard we're talking the previous soul that increases your pal damage we're talking the relics which increases your dog's attack speed as well as the relic that helps your veldy lizard and the turtle do a bunch of damage so you can see that you can actually maximize on pal damage quite nicely all right let's start talking about mounts now mounts are a great way of getting a very high amount of health attack and defense which is always great unfortunately it also gives you some evasion which you don't necessarily need because you get a lot of your damage from counters but if you're evading the attacks it can actually end up harming you because you're not dealing counter damage and the enemy is loading up their skills and skills are deadly for you now when you move over to the empower tab you can actually empower your mount giving you one of these stats at random which could be skill damage basic attack damage and pal damage and of course if you're building a pal focused build you can see how the pal damage can also stack up from the mounts now when you talk about advanced mounts you can actually get the pirate breaker fairly cheap you only need five sky rider passes to get it and actually gives you a reasonably high amount of crit rate and crit damage so one percent and five percent every second going up to 20 percent crit rate and 100 percent crit damage after 20 seconds now when you unlock it you also get a 10 percent ignore evasion which is always on so you don't have to actually use the power breaker to get this it'll be a passive ability that you'll always have the white tiger is really good too once you unlock it you get basic attack damage which is great but if you look at the extra amount of skill if you have more health than the enemy does you'll actually get 15 percent increased damage which is lovely because you want to get as much damage as you can but if you have less health than the enemy the enemy's attack gets reduced by 10 percent allowing you to live even longer the blue ox is nice as well it gives you pal damage of 10 percent Again, that's another passive that you'll always have, even if you're not using the blue ox. But if you look at the skill, it increases your damage resistance by 10% and reduces control effects by 30%. Now you are pretty focused on damage resistance, so I can see how this can be quite helpful too. And then when you go to the mini motorcycle, that's a really nice one. It actually increases your global counter damage by 10% every time you release a counter. And that stays for 3 seconds, but it can stack up to 3 times. So you can get up to 30% extra global counter damage. And if you keep on doing a lot of counters, you can maintain that 30% extra global counter damage. Which is amazing because that can help you deal a lot more damage. Of course, when you unlock it, you get a bunch of health, which is great as well. So that covers our mounts. Let's talk about fruit bonuses. Now when you talk about fruit bonuses, you probably want to get as much global counter damage as possible because while you have a lot of survivability and maximizing on the main source of damage seems to be a very nice way to go about it. So if you're able, you can get five global counter damages in your fruit bonuses. Now you could also decide to go the critical damage route if you have built a reasonable amount of crit rate. But if you don't have any crit rate or if it's really low, then perhaps you can stick to counter damage. Another option is you could go with health and defense as well to increase your survivability if that is becoming an issue. Me personally, I like to focus on one and make that the primary. So if I were to choose, I'd just choose all five of global counter damage. That being said, give it a shot, see what works better for you and let us know in the comments below. Okay, when you talk about your gear, you do want to maximize your counter strike chance as much as you can, given that counter strike is going to be your main source of dealing damage to the enemy other than that you can choose 
one or the other. You can go with the regeneration build where you can maximize your regeneration so you get a lot of healing every second, in which case, of course, you're going to be using the panda as well and those souls that give you extra regeneration. Or you could go the more offensive route, which is getting crit rate. And of course, then you can maximize a little bit on your critical damage as well, which is an alternate option for you to choose. So definitely try to max out your Counter-Strike chance. Once it gets high enough, you could go other routes as well. And then as a secondary strat, you could either go regeneration or you could go crit rate. Now, I don't recommend going half-half. And the reason for that is that if your regeneration is low and you're using the panda, you're not really maximizing the effect of the panda. So if you're going regeneration, you might as well just go all in on regeneration, giving you a lot of health and a lot of recovery. Because if you're going to build on panda, you need to have reasonably high regeneration to benefit from it. Alternatively, you could go all in on crit rate, get a very high crit rate, and then you can build on some crit damage as well, giving you a little bit more offensive ability. All right, artifacts are another great way for you to get a bunch of health, attack, and defense. It also gives you ability to ignore evasion, which is great. It's somewhat of a counter towards mounts. And if you go to the morph type, you can actually get sort of upgraded artifacts as well. In my opinion, the Candy Gatling seems to be a really good choice because, well, basic attacks and counters unleash an additional 1 to 5 bullets, each dealing 10% of your current basic attack damage. So an extra 10 to 50% of your basic attack damage with each basic attack and counter. And then it also gives you a passive 10% increase in your global attack, regardless if you're using it or not, after you unlock it. All right, back accessories. Another good way for you to get a bunch of attack, defense, and health using these feathers. And by the way, I think it makes the most sense for you to upgrade them equally because as you can see going from level 30 to 31 it's a pretty huge jump so every 10 levels there's a pretty good jump and of course as you level it further it gets more and more expensive so you want to try to get these jumps as many times as possible so equally upgrading them makes a lot of sense not to mention the fact that as you continue having the feathers reach certain levels you unlock better tails and once you unlock a bunch of tails you get additional benefits from the handbook now when you go into the talents the bottom right gives you a bunch of counter damage and healing along with counter attacks which is great that being said if you were building on pal damage i'd be tempted on this talent on the left side as well which you can get relatively easily and of course the top side is all about damage resistance so if you are struggling with survivability you could go the top route as well though me personally i feel like the bottom right is my favorite because it's giving counter damage and as you know i like to build on something and maximize that but of course you can decide what you're struggling with and choose the talents accordingly now when you go to the morph tab you'll notice that you have wings and one of the wings actually gives you an increase in counter damage and it increases it by 0.5 percent each time stacking up to 60 times meaning that by the 60th time you've got an extra 30 percent counter damage which is great because well that's how you do most of your damage you also get a 10% global health once you unlock it as a passive bonus. Finally, I do want to mention that the tech park is a wonderful way for you to get a lot of attack, health, and defense, and you definitely should not overlook it. Try maximizing the tech rush event where you can start using all of the ore that you've collected and gaining some amazing bonuses within the tech park. Awesome. And since I still have you here, I want you to know that you can get between 10 to 35% bonus on in-game purchases in the Legend of Mushroom, allowing you to save a lot of money if you're into spending in-game. There are also some amazing days, which are essentially the bonus days, and the upcoming one is on April 26th, which gives you an extra 5% bonus to your base, meaning that you will get a minimum of 15% bonus on that day, so you can maximize that and get stuff much cheaper. I'm going to link a video in the description below which will go through the whole process in detail with you so you can start saving up today. All right, and that covers this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please like, please subscribe to our channel so you can get notified when we release the next two class videos tomorrow and day after tomorrow. And also check out our channel. We have a bunch of other interesting videos, including some of the other class videos that you may or may not have watched. So if you haven't watched them, check them out. Hopefully you like them as well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.